Hello, BookTube, and welcome back to Poetry Thursday, a little BookTube event, stress on the little, <laughs> where just a few people read poetry on Thursday, just to keep a, a tiny little toehold for this once queen of all the genres. And I am doing all of my reading from one book. I am reading my way through 20th century American poetry. Nice big heavy anthology that I got from a shop that no longer exists, uh, that takes us through American poetry uh, from its very beginnings in the, the modern era uh, to its downfall and the downfall of the whole genre because it's the mid 20th century that American poetry is where poetry as a popular genre went to die. Suddenly people, normal people, people who were reading uh, I don't even know the, the latest Edna Ferber, the latest Norman Mailer, the latest uh, Ernest Hemingway, the, the, buying their books at a kiosk or a store and the shop next to the train station on their way back to New York City for their job stopped even considering buying poetry. They used to buy it, and then they stopped even considering it. Uh, so those, those businessmen, those busy housewives, those busy school teachers, who would once upon a time have characterized their haul from the new bookstore as uh, the latest novel, uh, maybe a popular biography, and also, of course, a couple of volumes of poetry. Uh, after the, mid, the middle part of the 20th century, and thanks to American poetry, that stopped. They stopped buying that sort of thing. Uh, but we're not there yet. Most of the poets that we're dealing with now, as we move along, as we move further in time, most of these poets are living into living memory, the 70s and even the 80s. Uh, but we're still dealing with their early works. That's especially true uh, today. Today's poet is Stephen Benson Benet. And uh, he's in this anthology. This anthology gives him a couple of, of inclusions. Uh, but in a real sense, he shouldn't be. I mean, you couldn't do an anthology like this without him, but in a real sense, he shouldn't be in here because he's a one-hit wonder. In 1928, he wrote a, a poem. He wrote John Brown's Body. It was the most famous thing that he ever did by far. It was the most famous thing in the country for a long, long time. It was, it was his Shropshire lad. There was no chance uh, that anything he would ever do would eclipse the fame of that work. Uh, so unless you're going to put that whole thing in this book, and you're not, then you're going to put in other stuff by someone that no one's ever going to read otherwise. Uh, but we have a couple of poems, so I thought, I thought we'd read one of them. Uh, this is from, it was, it's from 1936. It's called 1936. Uh, and it goes like this. All night they marched, the infantrymen under pack, but the hands gripping the rifles were naked bone, and the hollow pits of the eyes stared vacant and black when the moonlight shone. The gas mask lay like a blot on the empty chest. The slanting helmets were spattered with rust and mold, but they borrowed the hill they borrowed the hill for their machine gun nest as they had of old. So it's a it's a skeletal ghost army that we're seeing at night. And the guns rolled and the tanks, but there was no sound, never the gasp or rustle of living men, where the skeletons strung their wire on disputed ground. I knew them then. It is seventeen years, I cried. You must come no more. We know your names. We know that you are dead. Must you march forever from France and the last blind war? And they respond, Fool, from the next, they said. So you notice that the, the prior verses are leading us to think it's been seventeen years, in other words, since World War I, you're talking, you're engaged in all of these moldy uniforms, you're engaged in all these old habits of entrenching and fortifying your position, you're just, you're, you're dead and buried, so you're, you're just ghosts from the previous war. Uh, but they're not. They're not. Uh, must you march forever from France and the last blind war? Fool, from the next, they said. Because they're from the war to come, 1936, you would have been feeling the drumbeats of that pretty loudly. Uh, pretty effective. It's pretty effectively done. I, don't, I, I didn't do it justice with my reading, but you, if you look at it, you can see all the rhyming stuff that's going on. It's an extremely controlled, professional poem. Uh, not at all like the stuff we're going to be finding in not too long a time. <laughs> but we're still blessed for now. Stephen Vincent, Vincent Benet is not bad to read, so that is your, your Poetry Thursday for today. Uh, and who knows what next week we'll bring uh, the drama is coming but I think we have a few more weeks to stave it off <laughs> so I'll wrap this up for now and I will see you then thank you BookTube